What is going on guys and welcome to the 67 Xamarin Android tutorial. Uh, this video is going to be of course a continuation of the previous two where we are logging in with the Facebook SDK through Xamarin Android. So uh, where we left off was we had a login button. However, if we actually click that login button, we'll probably get an error. Yeah. So uh, and that's because the activity that should be launched is uh, basically not firing because we haven't specified it yet. So let's just recap on what we've done so far. We, we've, we've set up the, the developer console and we had to give a key hash and, you know, just to kind of recap, we've, we've, uh, we got our manifest and we, we specified our app ID, which is what we got from the developer console, which is really what ties uh, the Facebook SDK to our application and lets them communicate and, and sends out a handshake. So that is, uh, that's really what we want and that's what we, what we did all that setting up for. And since uh, since then we, we've got the component, we have the Facebook Android SDK. So we've initialized it and that's really all we've done. And of course we've uh, made the button here, which uh, Facebook takes care of a lot of it for us. And that's what gave us the button. So we haven't wired up anything. There is no, there is no logic behind this button click. And, and that's what we're gonna do here in this tutorial is we're going to actually actually communicate with the Facebook SDK and lot with the login button. All right guys, so uh, nothing, nothing of that being, enough of that uh, talking about, let's go ahead and actually do it. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to actually implement a callback manager. And the callback manager is gonna be what actually delegates you know what uh, what functions and what are being what functions are being called in, in the actual the functions that we're going to implement uh, here in a second. All right, so it's going to be an interface, and we'll do we'll do i callback manager, and we'll just call it i callback manager. And then down here, let's get actually we'll we'll leave that here for a second. So right here, we're actually going to do we're going to actually instantiate our login button, and we'll just call it a button. And we'll do a good old find view by ID, cast it to a login button. And this is gonna be the button that's actually here, right guys? So this is gonna be the login button. So now we have a reference to our login button. And down here is where we actually start doing doing some stuff. So we can do, uh, the first thing we wanna do is set read permissions. And we this is the permissions that that's the user is gonna be asked to accept. So it's gonna say, hey, you know, do you want this application to be able to see your users and friends in your profile? And this stuff is pretty much default. And this is the stuff that they're actually gonna to have to agree to, to be allowed for your app, uh, that agree to for your app to actually be able to log them in and, and get their information. So they're out to agree to it first. So we set the permissions and uh, this can be used in a fragment and we can actually set the fragment here, but since we aren't doing it in the fragment, where this is pretty much, uh, we don't really wanna work with fragments. I, I, um, not for this tutorial since it's a little out of the scope and but this uh, can easily be implemented with a fragment which I do advise if you're trying to actually implement a full login system but hopefully this will get you pointed in the right direction just using an activity so we have the button we set the permissions and now we want to actually instantiate the callback manager which is pretty simple just using the callback manager factory and then we just call it to create method and it'll pass back a callback manager so now we have a reference to that and you'll see what that's gonna be doing here in a second. So we're gonna register a callback. We wanna say, okay, when this button's click, we, uh, we want something to be con in control of what methods get called, depending on the situation, whether it was successful, whether the user canceled, an error happened, whatever. So notice that the first thing it, it takes in is a callback manager, which is perfect, which is what we have. And then the next thing it takes in is an iFacebook callback. And this is gonna be this, all right? So it's gonna be this class right here. It's gonna give us an error, of course, because this is not yet an iFacebook callback manager. And that's because we haven't implemented it. So once we implement the iFacebook callback manager, or callback interface, and if we hit control, if we hold control dot, we'll get an implement and we hit enter. And it'll actually, we're actually gonna implement these three methods. So then this error goes away and says, okay, and so now you're gonna implement this. So now this is, this is actually of type iFacebook callback and the callback manager is gonna decide what method to call depending on the situation. Okay guys, so that's a, you know, hopefully a, that, that's a good explanation of what's going on. I don't wanna, I try to do my best not to just, uh, as you know by now, not to just tell you to do this, 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 and this, but tell you why it's happening so that way, um, once you understand it, it'll kind of stick a little better. At least it does for me. All right, so the, the, there is one more method that we need to override. So let's go ahead and do override on activity result. 
an on activity result gets called when uh, the activity returns from an, another activity being called and the activity the, that was called returns control to this one this whole activity and then this method gets called and uh, when does that happen well that happens over here guys and, and I, like I said before this uh, you'll see this screen when you first log into your app it'll say you know it'll come into here and say hey mr. user do you want you know login how to or however whatever your your project is named in your your application would you like them to uh, be able to see your profile information blah 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 and if the user says yes okay then what happens is it it comes back into here and we call the and we call the callback manager and we pass it the the data that was passed through the request code see that the it has its, its own on activity result method and we pass back in the request code the result code which we'll actually have to cast to an integer and um the data so what it basically does is just takes this information and relays it to the callback manager which then depending on this information that's given decides what which uh, of these three methods to call so like if the user hits cancel then what's going to happen is you guessed it it's going to say okay well the user canceled let's go ahead and call cancel that way we can program something and uh be able to implement it properly where maybe we'll say you know you have to sign in or maybe we'll just kill the app you know depending on whether the you know it's, it's really upon your own discretion of how you want to handle that case okay so we're not going to really do on cancel or on air since on success is really where the magic happens but i hope these are a little little self-explanatory on really what you need to do of course if the user hits okay on that activity it'll come in here and undo on success if everything went great all right, so that, that's usually uh, what we're actually hoping for, of course. So the on success is where, like I said, where, where a lot of the magic begins to happen. And notice that it returns a Java language object result. And that's really something to do with like the Xamarin uh, bindings or something that it returns a Java object when it really should return a login result, uh, of something of type login result. And, and, you know, the only reason why I know that is because I just want to make sure that, you know, you just... Uh, you know, don't go off of what I say, you know, just come into here and, uh, you know, take a look for yourself, of course, if you're, if you have any doubt, uh, notice that right here, you know, on success login result, this is what gets actually gets, gets given. So that's, that's how I know, okay, hey, this is actually going to be a login result type. So in other words, it's okay to cast it to a login result. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. So we'll do login result and we'll call it login result. And then we'll do result as login result and that's going to cast it to a login result which is going to give us some uh some vital information that we need and the most important one is going to be probably the user id so we'll do login result dot and then we'll just go ahead and check out what we got uh, available to us which really isn't much there's a few properties and through uh uh methods that we can call but the big one is access token and the access token is you guessed it gives us access to a few different things and mainly what it does is it gives us access to the user ID, which is in of type string. So the user ID is like, you know, it's, it's what the ID that ties that Facebook user to, uh, to Facebook. So uh, we can use that and then use it to tie that user ID to our own application and then be able to, you know, save it in a database or whatever, and then simply go ahead and, and verify them this way whenever we get the user ID. So it's simply uh, something that's pretty handy. So, and then once they're connected once until they actually, you know, disconnect and they, they actually disconnect from the app, what they're going to do, uh, what it's not, what it'll just kind of log them in automatically. We'll check to see if an access token is not null, which means they're still logged in, grab the user ID, authenticate them, and they'll never have to actually log in. You know, it'll all be, be an automatic process to them, to the user, and it'll give them really a nice fluid uh, way to enter in, into your app. And then, of course, you get a, you get a whole information from their profile. So, the user ID is what what where where it all starts. But you, we might be asking, you know, where is the where is the profile name? Where is the other? Where's the good stuff? You know, where's their friends? Where's their their you know? How, how can they comment and stuff like that? Well, a lot of that's done to the profile, and we can get the profile once we have control of the access token, and once we know they're actually connected, is when we can start accessing the profile. However, uh. You know this met this this uh, video is going to be concentrating simply just on logging in of course and the next video is going to be using the login manager which is a different way to log in so for those of you that are you know not content with logging in this way and want a little more control 
over your button, stay tuned. The next video is going to go over the login manager, which is going to lead us to the same result. And uh, if you're, but if you're not interested in that, the reason why I'm telling you, simply go ahead and skip a skip a few videos, and you're going to get to the point where we start accessing the profile and getting all the good stuff. All right. So just a little disclaimer there of you know, hopefully uh, I'm not trying to waste your time if you if you kind of already got this set up and you want to just start learning how to actually to grab the user's info. So because uh, but because we have no really you know user interface to to work with right now, and that's that's a little beyond the scope of this single video. What we'll do, what we'll go ahead and do, guys, is we'll we'll go ahead and do a console dot right line just to simply make sure that the user ID is being printed out and then we actually are in fact connected to Facebook. All right, so now that with that being said, we know we have all this and hopefully I've been pretty thorough of what's going on here, guys. The last thing we need to do is we need to come back into our Android manifest and we need to specify the the activity. And this is, remember, the activity that gets called right here. This is all taken care of through Facebook. So Facebook takes care of this whole activity. We simply just need to tell our application that, hey, this activity exists and it will launch. So when it does, you know, here's a little bit about it. And this is usually a standard for Android. Uh, if you're using like, you know, just Java, Android Studio does require that you, you, you know, Android in general requires that you set your activities. Xamarin just uh, spoils us a little bit because it, it actually does it, th it does it through the, the assembly info and it, and it creates the activity statement and saying all the activities that exist. Uh, it does that through, through the uh, dynamically. So we don't have to really worry about that. It takes care of that for us. But in this case, we do have to set it manually. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, okay, you know, let's come back to, to uh, the browser and we'll say, okay, for this activity to do, what we need to do is we need to actually set that here. And we need to actually just declare that, that this is the activity that will be launched and just kind of giving Android a little heads up on that. Let's go back and we'll just set that and we'll just paste it into here, all right? So I just want to make sure that you know you know that this is actually being pasted in from the, the documentation. And the last thing that we need to change is make sure that you have an at string and it just assumes that your app name uh, is in fact app underscore name, which is from the strings, which it's not. It's actually application name. Alrighty. So the application name, uh, whatever it is, you know, or you can just put hard code set something in here, it really doesn't matter. And we will close that. And last but not least, uh, actually that's already commented out, so that's good. So let's go ahead and run this guys and verify it's working the way we expect it to. So I'm probably not going to get this this activity right here. And the reason being is because I've already connected through this app before, but uh, you probably will, which is totally normal. And if you do, just accept the accept it as a user that you're saying yes, this application can have permission to to whatever they ask for, uh, and then you know that'll send you back. So that being said, uh, after that's done, it it should only happen one time, and then when it does, you uh, the user shouldn't be asked anymore after that. The emulator. All right. So the activity that you guys we'll see it should be something like this. Like I said, I've already seen it because uh, I've logged in and it only asks the user one time. Once they've authenticated their app, then it will, shouldn't ask them. But after that, you'll get a login. And then what you'll get is the logout, all right? So logout has been uh, given to us, which means that we are currently connected. So on success, let's just end this now. On success was called and it printed out the the user ID, the user ID of my Facebook app, or I'm sorry, uh, profile, and uh, I am connected. So now what we do is uh, really whatever we want. So usually we can take the profile, go into another fragment or our activity, whatever whatever you're using, and that'll work, okay? So if you are using fragments, uh, I believe that it works best with a support fragment, so that's from the support library, uh, just from my experience which you can easily do, uh, just follow the documentation. But the activity is probably the most straightforward way just to get you guys going in the right direction of the Facebook SDK and, and uh, how to implement it and how it works. So uh, there you go, guys. I mean, in the next video, we're actually gonna do the, pretty much the same thing, but just using the login manager. And um, that's gonna be for people that want a little more control over what's going on. If you don't really care about this, if this way works perfectly for you, then great. Uh, just simply uh, go to the next video after the, after the next one and we'll go into like start uh, you know grabbing the profile 
and getting all the good stuff like the the name and all that stuff so uh, just make sure you go ahead and get that uh, take, a, take a look at that if you haven't done that yet and that way we can start working with the interface and just kind of print out some stuff just to see how it's working and what, what else we can do with the SDK. Alright guys, so uh, stay tuned. Thanks for watching.